Welcome to this afternoon's uh, discussion. This is mainly for the beginners and those who are curious about watercolor. Uh, I've been creating uh, sketches with watercolor uh, since 1996 when I was in college. And then uh, th later on, I started you know, integrating it with my urban sketching. So this is this is when we first started. So a little bit of history. Buzz was an Amer visiting American uh, lecturer for Raffles uh, Design Institute. Uh, I wrote an article about on, on on sketching water fountains of Metro Manila. So and then he read it, and then um, he, he we contacted also he contacted actually uh, Ryan Sumo, which is this guy with the glasses. And so the three of us later on we met up. Uh, in a cafe and we started talking about the possibility of urban sketching. Back then, it was known as Urban Sketchers Philippines. So it wasn't by region yet. Uh, this is this is uh, my, my the way I draw. Um, okay, so I'm just showing <laughs> that I could, I could, I like to draw uh, different things like uh, cartoons or comics also, architecture and then uh, things about what I do is, is I also even observe uh, people around and I, I just simply color them. Uh, this one example here on the right side and how I implement watercolor. Very, just to color something like when I'm sketching. Uh, this is, this is, th these, these are students of mine before, back uh, uh, in 2011, so 11 years ago. Uh, we'll talk more about these things. Uh, with, whether you you buy the what what type do you buy? Is it by tubes or by pan? We'll see. No? So urban sketching is is something that I do when whenever I can. Uh, like this is an urban sketching of vegan when I was there. This is <laughs> back then I was very slow at, at doing things. This this is like a three hour sketch of the. Uh, Arc of the Centuries in UST or University of Santo Tomas. And then um, even in the interior of uh, San Sebastian. So watercolor is, is something that I, I try to experiment. Okay, so this is another style. Uh, this is more of a very, very wet, very, very wet on wet type of, of watercolors. So I was experimenting with them uh, with, with, with the medium. The thing about this is that the first thing that you need to master is, is actually line drawings. That's the most important thing. Uh, before you can color something in watercolor, drawing is first uh, the most important. So, but then I'm, I'm just showing you what a digital drawing is uh, on my tablet. But watercolor, okay, as, as a medium, it's been around. For centuries, it wasn't a, a legitimate uh, medium uh, back when it started in Europe. Uh, it was considered to be uh, subpar next to oil. It was considered as a very tentative medium, just a, a, a preparation, you know, like a, the sketch before the the actual paint, oil painting. Of course, uh, materials. If I were going to be talking about materials, okay. So paper is one of the most important things that you need to consider also for, for before you you start is that uh, you start using um, watercolor paper that is suited for the medium, because uh, ordinary paper like bond paper will not suffice and will not react. So uh, this one I'm 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 showing you the Montval type of uh, paper which is uh, cellulose it's not 100% it's not a pure 100% cotton 100% cotton is uh, the likes of um, uh, arches for example is what I use but Montval is something that I, I start out with uh, my, I, I ask my students to start out with and then we have brushes the one particular brush that you could actually have is uh, a round brush, which is uh, between uh, size 8 to size 12. Okay, so these are different sizes. So you have to have a mixing palette, uh, a board if you can, a masking tape to tape your uh, watercolor paper, and then you have things like tissue paper, a spray uh, atomizer or for water, two containers, like uh, one for washing your brushes and one for picking up, picking up um, uh, fresh water. And then we 
pencil is usually the the medium or that that's always associated with the medium that you pencil first and then you watercolor. And then some of the techniques uh, which I'll live demonstrate this is the wet on wet techniques and then the things that I do uh, before prior to this now. Before this, no, before the full color, you have to the number one thing that you have to keep in mind is to control your consistencies or value control, which I will demonstrate later on. Other terms, I guess are, are these like dry on dry, wet on dry and and the like. So this is what I'm talking about, the uh, values. So it's not just about, you know, coloring something and then trying to like say if I just the furniture is is brown so therefore i'm just going to color it brown but uh in if you want to to place in a shade and shadow you have to have a, a more value or the more pigment to make it darker and uh, a lighter area okay so there's there's a transition of light to darkness but this is a studio based uh, or drawing the the advice is if you're more serious about about uh, wanting to learn or, or, or you know go at it with with watercolor is that you buy a palette so this is easily done already is you can buy the commercial sets that you could buy 12 or 18 or 24 sets of colors which are um, fixed but you can always buy you know uh, the more economical way of, of doing it is actually just buying uh, tubes and then placing them on pans like this and then metal containers in, uh, for metal pallets that can close like this one tubes okay so this one i'm i'm showing a very cheap uh pabeo which is something that is not very advisable to start with because it doesn't behave i know it's cheap it's not something that i i, I like to to use master the number one you have to master is is really controlling the the values from the light to darkness uh, again so in conclusion no, just before before i could uh, start demonstrating is uh, the number one key thing about using being good at watercolors number one first uh, master drawing first then you can call you start coloring you're not good at drawing yet to a degree that's acceptable to you consistency now if and, and or value control of watercolor is is mo the most important color combination secondary and then um, assemble a compact called watercolor set and then uh, the the number one thing that I actually want to advise you is to buy a uh, at least a book start buying books actually it's uh, following the teacher now this is how I started now so it's a tried in by actually uh, uh, investing in books and following the exercises the the way the artist or the writer uh, describes that's how I learned actually I had so many masters uh, which who I followed among them are are already here in my bookshelves and then I still read them from time to time so I'm I, I'm, I'm continuously uh, learning how to to create to really experiment on, on some techniques and then it becomes your own actually when you start following an author for example and then you start you start trying out their styles and then you move on to another author who has a different style okay, there's no one true uh, sets of rules about watercolor because like for example uh, somebody would say that halos or those things that 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 form uh, when when you have this this crest uh, and then others would say that yeah you can uh, you can use that to your advantage uh, so it's just no there, there there are no fixed rules about watercolor so different authors say different things they have different rules to show you one, one of my old old uh, sketchbook which is already filled up okay so this is pencil with watercolor and then sometimes I also use ballpoint pen to to create these things and um and then watercolors okay so i use actually two colors is it when you say monochromatic it it means that uh, you, you can use one for example um I, I start out with my students with uh, the brown color or burnt sienna for example and then they start doing contrasting or the values so from light to dark dark to light exercises one of the earlier types of of watercolors that I, I created is, is, is this now so this is on location in vegan in back in uh, 2011 back then I, I did this for like 
what, 30 minutes because I, I was in a hurry. Um, sometimes I, I, it takes me hours to do. Sometimes it takes me uh, a few minutes to do. Uh, but this one, for example, is the San Sebastian Church. So this is one, well, two pages worth, two A5. Took hours to, to color. Uh, I could I could I, I could remember two hours coloring this. Of course, of course, the uh, the pen and ink took about an hour also. So that's a three hour thing. Time is also the the, the factor that I, I started to learn uh, to to draw faster and to color faster. So it took me a while to 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 really try to put everything into within an hour. So that's my rule. Uh, it's, uh, and sometimes it takes me longer. So this is this is my wife. So this is pen and ink, and she was in labor. And uh, I, so I quickly watercolored this, and uh, tr only focusing in, on her while she was in labor. <laughs> Panina. And this is our son. <laughs> so this is pencil and with watercolor. So I, I tried different things. Okay, this is this one took longer. Okay, so you can see better here. So it's better focused. And then sometimes I don't have that the, 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 the time to do uh, a very elaborate and that's okay. It, it, it's, it's practice. Okay, so this is an experiment with ink and watercolor at the same time. So coloring this is, is very quick. So I, I made it a point that I wanted light colors with this one. This is pen and ink and then watercolor. Uh, seen in Lawton. And then this is in Balear. And then really sometimes I just color different, uh, I mean just, just a quickly color, put in place in colors. And before you eat, okay, so this is a 10 minute <laughs> sketch of something. So very quickly now, if you notice, why, why, how I'm doing all of this is that I'm, 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 I'm also intensifying some of the colors. Sometimes I need to, to have a lighter wash and sometimes I need to intensify. So those are the things that you need to control, okay? So other things again, um, so this is very quickly done. Very sketchy lines and then watercolor. So again, the importance of drawing first, master first drawing before you can start coloring. And this is another example. Okay, so this one entire thing took me an hour to do when I was in a cafe because this is not a, an urban sketching, but uh, something that uh, I quickly done while waiting in a cafe for my wife. But watercolor is, is very quick. I love the, the medium because it's, it's very quick. It dries quickly. It, it's not so messy. These, these are some of the pigments that I use, but you don't need to have a lot of colors. What I advise is, is usually four to eight colors. You can live with those, uh, with four to eight colors. And sometimes, and I started experimenting, <laughs> and, and I do this from time to time now, watercolor without pencils. So I'm, I'm, I'm trying to experiment with that. I look at the shapes and I follow the shapes and, and then experiment with other things and then other things. Now, this is what I mean by you did not have all the colors because from this is only from three colors. You can have three colors, a, a red, the primary colors, huh? yellow, blue. That's all you need, actually, in, in order for you to create a numerous combinations of colors. So this is a chart, okay? So this is something that I, I uh, experimented here. So I, I, I tested, I, I tested that, that idea, and then this is the results. For example, you can have secondary colors. You want a purple, uh, you want a violet, you mix, of course, uh, uh, the blue and the red. And then if you want need green, first yellow and and in between these things you can you can um, change the values of, of or the pigment or the chroma of it based on this. You won't need an orange, of course you mix these things. Now the, the only reason why you would would buy the actual color itself, no, the, like say the secondary color, which is uh, orange for example, uh, is is for convenience because it, it, it shortens my time in mixing. 
I mean, I, I have to mix uh, orange. I need to produce it. I have to mix. Whereas, if there's an orange in my palette, I can easily just take some then to, to combine it with another color instead of me having to do all of the things that it's my actual palette which i bring to my to my sketches you know? so i have as i said you know you can only need three colors a a, 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 a yellow red a red or any of the blues what you can do is actually have this all right this is a uh, a container okay so this is altoids and then what I did here is as as something that I can I can bring around assemble a a, a, a set like this uh, so you, you have a, a a yellow a red a blue and a brown the brown is there so that I can I can actually make it make things darker why no black or white? You're, you're not supposed to use black or white when you're doing watercolors, but nowadays I don't, <laughs> I don't follow that rule anymore. But um, yeah, more on that now. But, but when you're a beginner, this is what, I, uh, what, what, what you need to, to have, no? three. The, the, more, the better one, an expanded version of this is that one lighter yellow, one darker. One lighter yellow, uh, red, darker red, and then one lighter blue and one darker blue, and then browns also the same thing. You have, if you can, you have a lighter brown and then a, a, a darker brown, and you can make, uh, can use those and make a lot of combinations of colors. Easily assemble this, and, and really just buy one of these thin Altoids, and then and then you can use this, for example, this space for just mixing. Or you buy one of these. This is a mixing palette. You can clip this onto your sketchbook, right? On a piece blank piece of paper, you can clip this mixing palette and mix this. And if you're sketching here on this side, you have this. And then, and uh, what about brushes? Well. If you're a begi beginner, I actually need you to to master first the traditional type of watercolor brushes. Okay, so this is an example of a sable brush. This is a number eight, I think, or six. But a bigger brush, which is a number 10. Okay, so this one in this particular one, I think it's a 12. Is that, you know, something that points. And then some of you are familiar with a water brush. Okay, water brushes are, have been around since the 1990s only. It was invented back in Japan, I think, uh, from what I heard from other people. And uh, this one contains water. But the thing about this is the problem is some of you would um, have trouble controlling the flow of the water. So this is uh, the Koi brand. And uh, if we try to experiment with this, no, I'm just gonna squeeze and then do that. Yeah. If I need it to be darker and then smaller water, don't squeeze and then just do that. So this is a water brush. And then so if I need to place in water uh, onto this, I just squeeze it a bit and then it takes a uh, getting used to. I, what I want students to do is to master the traditional brush, uh, controlling the traditional brush. You know, the most important things that I, I want you to, to first master are the values. Okay, so the, the, the values that I'm talking about are, are these, no? Consistencies, okay? Sometimes they're, they're known as watercolors consistencies. So this is a pigment called neutral tint. So neutral tint is, is like a blackened color. But uh, it's a mix of uh, multiple pigments in, the, in that creates this black grayish. When you are light, when you have more water than the pigment, and you mix it like so, this is what it's it, it looks like. So this is the um, tea consistency. Okay, let's let's name these consistencies with drinks. When you have tea, uh, you you would somehow get an idea of what what. Tea is the consistency of tea. It's very light, right? It's translucent. More water than the pigment. And then you add in the pigment, you get this consistency. So I like to call this coffee. And then you have cream, which is more pigment than water. And then you would have honey. It's like malapot, right? Malapot, uh, it's very thick. 
it's it's very you know so because that's because it's less water right and then you have uh you got the the cream coffee and then tea so how do you achieve this this not okay i use filtered water it makes a difference tap water uh, has this these mineral uh, sediments so in order for me to and then it affects the inner water color so in order for me to to have a cleaner type of watercolors a filter water or even uh, distilled water is is bet, best so i'm gonna use the neutral tint okay so i'm gonna wet here this is very light this is really you know like more water than the pigment if i try to and then if i need to bring it up to coffee consistency or the value of it no then i have to add in a bit more pigment to the mix and so when i do this it's a bit darker it's getting used to this this type huh? so when i when i first do watercolors the first consistency that i apply is tea i save a bit of the whiteness of the paper you're saving uh, some of the whites you need to save some of the whites in order for you to say you know, the i know you like this part I'm going to increase the pigment to the mix so that I will have cream. You know how the consistency of cream is not You notice that? And then if I really want the 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 the, you know, the, the honey, and then so this is more of this. Really very 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 black already. The mistake that I, I see my students do when, when watercoloring is, is, is that, you know, they, they apply so much, they don't, they don't have control of the consistency. I keep mentioning the consistency because, because they think that, you know, it's, it's really coloring in the, the, the size and then they don't know how, many, how, how much pigment. If you want the uh, cream or, yeah, the cream consistency, you have to mix in once to one. And then if you want... To mix in, say, uh, you want to mix the first tea, it's about, the pigment is about one-third the strength that of, of whatever, I mean, you have to dilute it uh, to a point that, you know, it's approximately about 20 to 30 percent of the pigment. Another thing that I, I have to mention is, is that keep your brushes nice and protected because I see, you know, they buy very expensive brushes and then they, they keep doing this. They just place the brush. It ruins the fiber of the tip, right? It bends them. So you, you shouldn't be doing that. You have to rest it like that. What's what's all of this? I mean, how how's this uh, applicable to, to our uh, watercolor application? So an example that I, I, I've done, I want to show you is this. It's a sketch of Boba Fett. So this is what I mean. So I started with very, very, very light. This is some, the latest thing that I've, I've, I've done. Mitts, maybe you have a burning question there. Do you usually, uh, like, uh, since we, you lay down the dinner consistency first before moving on to the cream and the honey, uh, for a particular passage of the sketch, how many layers max can you layer it on until it becomes, you know, all ruined? Oh, overworking. Okay. Yeah, because that is one of my <laughs> uh, weaknesses. I, I tend to overwork until I can see the fibers lifting up and yeah. Darn. No, I don't I don't even count. In actuality, I what I do is is, is really one every time, one swoop lang. I don't go back and forth. Wonder. I do I do the S motion. What is that S motion? Probably I I, I like to see to show you that S motion, see because because if you have an area of your page like uh, you want you need to color something, okay. So if I'm doing this consistency, and if you have an area that you want to color, what you need to do is to do this S motion. What do you mean by S motion? You go down, you're doing S's, and that that's it. It's a clean wash. Right? And then you wait for it to dry for the next few things. So the brush is like the magic wand. You, uh, no, it's, a, it's the vehicle okay, of, of watercolor pigment. Right? So it's like a magic wand to transport things and to magically 
make them go there. The brush does not actually touch the paper. It is the water and the pigment that touch the paper. It's to transport the pigment, number one. Number two, it's to, when you, when you dry it, it's to pick up excess water or to erase. This is called lifting. And even if, if you like have a bead, for example, okay, I put in a bead of, of water. Okay, you don't see it. And then I dry it with a piece of tissue paper. You pick up the excess water. Okay, it sucks up the excess. And then you dry it again. Now with a damp brush, you can erase. You can lift some of the spots and regain some of the whiteness of the paper. But not to a point that you overwork it, huh? Does that answer your partly your question? Uh, it's very helpful because, you know, the thing you said about the brush barely touching the paper is not something that I think about. So I'll think about <laughs> it now. <laughs> okay, let me just show you probably a video of the consistency in action. But it's not necessarily urban sketching. So this is Boba Fett. So you could see the, the the way I'm handling is that I'm not going back and forth, um, in meaning to say uh, I'm 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 just um, I'm a bit sure where I'm going and what I need to do and questions. So it's handling the, it, it's handling it with conviction, <laughs> knowing uh, <laughs> where you need to go. Ano <laughs> yun um, If you notice, I didn't I didn't pencil. I was just looking at shapes and uh, it's something that again uh, a perception of. When we, what I use when I'm, I'm sketching and I'm looking at something, I look at the shape, I try to mimic the shape, and then I, I render it, making it more three dimension. It's, 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 it's something that you need to, to, to actually master. Really, it's, it's that. Is this really um, is to practice that consistency over, over let's say your favorite show. Uh, I like science fiction. I like I like astronauts, for example. So I, I watch a bit of that uh, Apple TV, and then uh, you got Star Wars, and then direct. I mean, this is direct watercolor. And I'm using just the neutral tint as a practice, and then uh, of course science fiction is one of my favorite things genre of of, of uh, watching uh, TV shows or movies. And so we need to practice. Um, of course, urban sketching, you could master first the uh, using the consistencies, like any lighter, any darker. It, you could usually squint your eyes to see which is the darker parts, which is the, the, uh, the, the um, uh, lighter parts. So the, uh, also this is a, a practice of, yeah, this is consistency that uh, I'm, I'm, I'm talking about here. So the lightest and then going darker as you go along. So I, I usually do the tea first, coffee and then the cream. And then usually the, the darkest areas will be your uh, honey. Ayan. So the same thing here. I think the values you could see is, is really that. No? Uh, this is the same house. Trying to, to put in the shades and shadows. It's something that I, I also use as a technique for me, a monochromatic drawing, or that 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 consistencies of say uh, the lightest, and then I, I go darker at the at the very end. When I started sketching out this this scene, 
I first did the black and white and then later on the colored version of that because this gives me a, a sense of what what it's supposed to in the values and the contrast and the like huh? and same thing here this is the Jones bridge of before but uh, I usually practice first with with photograph to practice first with photograph and if you can master the consistency based on photograph and then if you go out and then that's that's when you can practice your what, what if what, what you're seeing I mean illustrating it but consistency is is the number one thing that you need to, to pr really practice I was thinking can I explain to you about color combinations and the like and how I use them but but I can only show you okay so this is really uh, going back to my 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 works no and how I decide to call what 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 color to use and and where to place them but if you turn this into black and white it's the same no uh, same philosophy for for the consistencies meaning I go lighter I know you're darker I, I, I tend to be darker if it's more on the foreground. The background is this building, but I wanted to showcase this, like sort of like contrasting these things. I, I think I, I quickly did this very quickly. I just wanted to emphasize on the tree. I think I was more fixated on that. Same thing here. Sometimes you don't need to color everything. You just color what, what they hear. So I didn't even color the building, the background building anymore. Uh, partly of the tree, yes. But I was really quickly doing it. Uh, when you're doing watercolor, you don't, you don't need to color everything, actually. The, the, if you're focusing on this, this object. Some, some of the areas here, as you can see, are white paper. The white paper itself, no? Again, emphasis, if, you, if you're trying to focus on an ob, uh, the subject matter, you don't need to color everything so it's 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 mainly the the, the subject matter uh, you you need to save some of the spaces as white paper i would like to keep them you know where to place the lightest parts as as white as as possible excuse me janelle whenever yes, uh, you've shown us uh, many of your works and uh, i've seen that uh, uh like for example uh, your wife in labor I was just wondering how long did it take you to capture just just that scene when she was lying and uh, yeah uh, it maybe 10 minutes five minutes or something. 10 minutes 10 minutes to get rid of the color no did the color you, is the coloring is takes longer sometimes 20 minutes you did it afterwards yes so what you did uh, you sketch it first in pencil or in a no. pen pen direct pen you learn how to draw directly with pen uh, if you make mistakes that's a lesson in itself i don't don't carry uh, erasers you know working with pen sometimes uh, if you don't uh, i don't know but uh, if you don't uh, put in uh, an initial layout into using pencil where you can raise it like for example jonathan's uh, post i always follow it as a matter of fact some some of it i kept in my oh. folders i'm sorry for that pen, I don't, if you don't mind okay uh so i've seen that uh, you know his lines are always exact accurate oh. and uh, always uh, lines come together Oh. <laughs> you just drew Jonathan? it, uh, you know, with one stroke, and uh, you know the image comes out. Jonathan, how do you do it? Well, well, like you, Janelle, I I don't do any pencil work before, and very rarely, um, especially if I'm doing sort of sketching outside, urban sketching. N no, I don't use any um, pencil, but I make plenty of mistakes. Yes, um, <laughs> and you just. Yeah, try to correct it or just ignore it you know so um yes yeah, ignoring right. is yeah, the key just, um i mean it doesn't matter to me it doesn't matter if you if you've got a pers like a line of a path if the perspective is wrong the first time you draw it uh -huh. then I just draw it again 
Yes. Uh-huh. And you just and, and leave the line out there? Just leave it there? Well, sometimes it becomes, by the time I'm watercoloring, it becomes less apparent. Yeah, how, or, do you, how do you incorporate that uh, stray line over there and then uh, makes it uh, makes it disappear kind of, from view? Sometimes, but, uh, I can, sometimes you can just disguise it as, uh, you know, like <laughs> a crack in the paving or something or, you know, but... Um, but yeah, I generally I would just ignore it if I make a mistake. Okay, you know. thank you for that. Because what I do would be, uh, you know, just uh, draw over it, draw over it, and sometimes it becomes, so, huh, what's this? And then just throw it away. <laughs> so you know, multiple lines from a, a straight line, and then you draw over it, and then you draw over it, and draw over it, thinking that you can get the right line, or the right proportion, the right shape. Right. And then suddenly, uh, you have a, you have a unfavorable effect. Uh, and uh, yeah. No, the the philosophy behind behind the just just directly uh, drawing. Yeah, you. I mean, do lots of these things. Uh, you do practices because because we we tend to to think that you know uh, you want to be it to be as perfect as possible. Um, I mean, I used to do that. I mean, I mean, like, I wanted to be perfect. I spent hours and hours just drawing one, 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 one piece. Uh, but then uh, over the years, uh, I learned to uh, again ignore the mistake. It made me better at drawing and perceiving. It's a lesson it, when you make a mistake and then you don't like that feeling. Uh, so the next time you try to do it, you it, the the mindset there would be. Ah uh, yeah, uh, I didn't get the the shape correctly one time, so I need to uh, uh, to to uh, get the key shapes of the elements into place correctly, and then do the details later on. Well, in the case of my wife, no, she was in labor and all that. You know, I just like oh, oh so this is just this is mo- this is the moment that I need to sketch because. Uh, she wouldn't be in this way anymore. I wanted that memory. I wanted that uh, it, it was our, you know, she, she was in labor with our son. Drawing very fast the shapes and where the squiggly lines is. One, one, one of the things that I learned how to do is, is contour drawing. Drawing uh, uh, something that you see without the pen leaving until you're finished. Mm. It's it's something that you, you, you know, you start with the eye and then you... St- you you go and bridge things and then that 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 changed my my entire way of of drawing when I I started learning this uh, 22 years ago from a book called uh, Fast Drawing Techniques by 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 uh, David Rankin he, and then watercoloring was was the next step for me uh, when I mastered how I can draw portraits in three minutes oh my gosh with that technique. <laughs> Because I mean, they can do that. No, yeah. it's 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 something because the mindset here is is that you know erasing. Uh, that 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 was the time that I started not um, bringing any more erasers. Uh, Twenty two years ago. So when you when you when you do that, I mean, then and after mastering that, uh, I, th- I think I have it here. So this is this is the book that 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 really started me to, to to really do things, because because the philosophy of of David Rankin is you don't need to take pit, lots of pictures, be in the now, meaning not later on. You don't do it in the studio, when there was no digital pho- uh, photography back then. He took lots of pictures in film, and yeah. he had to develop them. He had to wait, yeah, had wait to de- yeah. and then and then. So what he did one time, he didn't have his camera with him. So he needed to to observe birds. Uh, so, and then uh, the story was, he started to sketch very very fast. And this is these are some of the things that uh, he he did. I mean, so, so contour sketching is is really very fast. So this is one of the things that uh, started me doing urban sketching even before urban sketchers. Back in 2006, and then yeah, it, uh, this is year 2000 when I started learning. Oh man, so I could I could do all of this, and I said, so the contour drawing is this. So we're very <laughs> the shape yeah. first, yeah. Shape and then first. you and then you do the, the details. Yeah. Okay. 
the, the, the details. So, yeah. And then after that, I go. I went on to learning uh, more about watercolor by by learning how to to create the shapes very fast, draw them, right? Even in with with the person, uh, with with people. Uh, and then you 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 know, and then watercolor is is like the icing on top, and uh, just to 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 really uh, put in the, the the material to delineate the material to to communicate what's what the the floor finish is. Is it shiny? Is it dull? Is it what what the form is by shades and shadows? The I advise for those beginners who are in, in uh, wanting to go into watercolor values first, the shades and the shadows. Uh, yes. the, the the control of it. So if you want to to see more of these demonstrations, Seguro, you can head out uh, to to uh, YouTube. Ready to say that you you can easily there's there's lots uh, back <laughs> back ten years ago there's there's there were hardly watercolor tutorials, but now it's like there's so many. Although although there are some topics in watercolor that I, I don't I haven't seen uh, being done, so I want to do uh, some of those sketchbooks. By the way. Get get sketchbooks because because uh, the sketchbook this is this is Moleskine. Of course, you need not buy Moleskine. This is not something that uh, I advise my students because this is one thousand two hundred pesos. This is not even hundred percent cotton uh, watercolor paper, but it's good. You have monologue, by the way. Monologue is monologue. It's yeah. I have monologue. This is monologue. Uh, the monologue brand is more affordable. Okay, so this is these these are values that where I'm talking about. Uh, this is in pencil, so I, I created a, a lesson for my students in values. Uh, same thing, so pencil. Learn the val if if you've done portraiture or if you in the medium of pencil or yeah any any scenes. The first thing that you learn is how to control the, from light to dark dark values. And then implementing them. So this is this is what I mean by also the. Hmm, how come I did not show this? <laughs> this is easier. <laughs> so I have a video of this. You can find it in my you know in my in my YouTube channel, which I demonstrated this now. So the the light is first. I even saved some of the the white areas here in vegan. This is a vegan scene. This is a photograph. So these are the values that you could see that you can see my some of my practices. Um, values so I, I i i test them if if what consistency they are in and then i apply them so the very first thing that i did was was really about the tea consistency i went coffee cream and then of course the last ones are the uh, honey parts so that's honey that's honey that's honey <laughs> so you can see oh yun i have the receipt <laughs> I place in the receipt. <laughs> oh, it's 1,000 pesos now. <laughs> 1,047 from uh, fully booked. Now, I taped it here <laughs> because I know uh, I want to to quote the pricing if ever. Monologue. We get it. Where can we get it? Uh, fully booked. I bought this in fully booked. Oh, fully booked? Yeah, yes. A, uh, oh, yeah. No, there are lots of... Um, uh, uh, affordable ones. Uh, yep. If it, it really depends also on your budget. Okay, so um, if we're talking about also nylon brushes versus uh, uh, sable hair, I uh, so what I've been showing you uh, particularly is is these are sable. They're very expensive. Okay. And then I have this uh, small, uh, you know, handy watercolor sets. Uh, yes, this is the koi. Yes. Yeah, the koi. koi. And then uh, sometimes I use the uh, this one Newton Windsor in Newton. Uh, yes, the 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 pocket. Uh, I don't know. The, yeah. That's the one thousand peso I can't one. Find this anymore. I can't yeah. find this anymore from an uh, art bar. Um, there are you know, uh, online. It's online now, so you can buy them in Lazada. Hi, um, just an insight, Janiel. Yes, uh, Pop. I just want to say that. Um, I'm really intrigued with the uh, contour drawing, how to draw oh. really quick. Because that's a, the burning question that I have. That's, that's been answered already. So, so I want to do that, the contour, contour drawing. So I want to be fast and I don't want to use the eraser anymore. So uh, that's something 
completely new to me. Not using what? the editor. <laughs> yes, it's really surprising. So, I really want to try the contour. contour the okay, so that. therefore, this is going to be a, a topic in the future. I guess so. <laughs> so, thank you. Thank you for, for that. that the, there's an addition from the last meeting. I think I'm going to be doing also how to do five-point perspective drawings. And how to do it really fast. <laughs> perspective, yes. But basically, contour drawing is, 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 is really all about after imaging. After imaging is, is retaining. But, but, but we all know this process. But we, we, we haven't described it or we never thought, thought about it. You see, when you look at something, right? right? You're looking at the subject, you're looking at the space, the, the, the place, the person. And then when you try to draw that, you have to retain this image of them here in your brain. So that when you're drawing, you have a, refer uh, a reference in your brain to where your line goes. And then that, that retention, that detail is only kept for a few seconds and then it disappears. Then you have to look up again where things are. Since you've recorded that memory onto the paper, when you look at the next inf piece of information, when you go back, you continue every time. So a few seconds and then you look up again, look down, look up, look down, and draw up and down. So that's what we call the after image, well, well uh, according to David Rankin. And then that, 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 that's how I do it. It's really looking up and down, looking up and down. Uh, very quickly. So that's the first clue of how you do contour you drawing. Do it just one line without lifting your pen or your yes, and then you, it, it it gives you that information, that data where next to go. So it's not like, this. not like this. Not like this. Not like that. Series of uh, I I you no know, no no. And then after a while, when you're so used to it, you don't think about it. You draw very fast. That's that's the key. So to draw with one line, not lifting your pencil, drawing the, uh, you know, that complicated line of a figure from yes. one point to another point. You end, yes. start from here and then you end from here. And, and then, bridging wow. the edges and the shadow lines together. Oh, it's a way of bridging. Shadow lines. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, it's like an extra sketch for, for sketchers. No, I... No, it's it's something that I've I've always uh, what well, since since year two thousand from what I read from the book and it's it has been something with I, I've been doing. I mean, I've been doing before that. Okay, I've been drawing portraits hours and hours in pencil. Uh, you know, from photograph you trace over the lines and then because you're not so sure where where things are uh, exactly and then so you have to, you're forced to photocopy that. That, that print of that photograph and treat and then enlarge it or you're going and you keep thinking maybe I need a phantograph um, and then you, you bought that phantograph and then you said wait a minute this is not making me draw better but oh, okay I'll, I'll use it anyway but the thing is it's it's all about developing that phantograph within you developing that phantograph that you could you can you can easily there's there's no physical phantograph. You know what a phantograph is? Yeah. Th those 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 things that that yeah. make Pencil that, that has a point and then it traces you you yeah. trace the you know the photograph. Anyway, thing is, they took me hours and then I like drawing portraitures and then it takes me hours. It's a studio intensive, a studio type of scenario. Now when I learned how to contour drawing, I, I can do it in, I, I was surprised. I, I drew my friend in three minutes. I was like, okay, this is something. So this is something that I've, I've never done before. This is magic. And then, you know, I, ever since then, I, I kept on drawing and drawing th that way. So the lines, for example, when, I'm, when I start watercoloring, the Lines only takes me 10 minutes of an entire scene of an architectural scene or, or space. And it takes me another hour just coloring it because, because watercolor takes a bit of time to dry 
on some parts, but I need to them to dry in the process. So yeah, watercolor is actually longer than than the penciling. The penciling only takes well, you can you can even pencil in five minutes, three minutes. Yeah, but uh, going back a bit, uh, you you've shown <coughs> us uh, in some of your examples earlier. You've shown us one of your work, which is uh, you call it a monochromatic thing. Well, not exactly monochromatic, but uh, what you did was uh, you have I uh, think two colors, brown and yellow. Yeah, yellow. Okay. Yes. Washed out, and then afterwards you drew some uh, pictures. I think it's a. Uh, uh, building or what? Okay. <clears throat> so, so which is better? First, you draw it in a pen. And no, then, uh, I draw it in you pen. Do the wash, and then you do the wash, color, and then I do the wash afterwards. Or usually, the wash first. Uh, defining the values. Now you and then actually draw the uh, outline in the pen. Uh, in pen. Actually, I've been. Like, I think Jonathan. Uh, 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 I think Jonathan I, does it differently. <laughs> no, he. Uh, Jonathan? <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> Wasn't able to follow our discussion. I probably, <laughs> I mean, I, I draw first in ink. Um, and then I probably take longer than Janil because I do, I, there's more ink on the paper. Um, oh. I, I, you know, maybe, I don't know. No, no, I, I, no, no, I, 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 I uh, the, the, the in minutes it's the fastest if, if i want to be more detailed it takes me longer right longer. yeah okay yeah it's, but, um yeah it's so a, it's ink and then watercolor i mean for me it takes about equal amount of time for the ink work and the watercolor work mm, yes that's true that's true because because uh, if if you want it a bit more detailed then then you do that uh you, you you do i i do i i used to do uh, a lot of 30 minute 45 minutes uh, uh pen and ink before i watercolor another 40 to an hour 45 minutes to an hour worth of watercoloring okay anyway i have one last question if okay then it's it. all right yeah. um this is just a fun personal question if you're forced to just bring three pigments with you <laughs> what would those be like in any situation like it's a nighttime oh, yeah. sketching or at the park or at the beach what would be those three pigments you would you know be forced to bring with you if you can only choose three these the usual okay so if you minus brown i can always make brown by mixing uh okay. first i need a green so in order for me to make green i have to mix yeah. blue and 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 yellow and then after which you uh, some some proportions of that green and the red in particular i want I, i'd bring myself this uh lemon yellow okay very specific type of yellow and then we have antriconoid okay so this is daniel smith this this sort of uh red that is very vibrant i i like it and then this is uh teal pg50 i, I Okay, but, but uh, the name of, of what, what Daniel Smith uh, has, has given is, is teal or co well, it's, I, I don't know what the compositions are exactly. I'm not the type of nerdy where it's a PY19. Um, uh, oh my gosh, what is don't that? Don't call me out like that. <laughs> uh, but I know, I know the, you know the, uh, yeah. So these are, these are some of these staples, but although I like ultramarine, but it's it's very you know, say very dark and then I like that deepness of darkness. But if if I if if you if you ask me, you know nga, this is this is my palette, my usual. See, I, I like I like lemon yellow. Uh, this is this is a, a, a areolin. It's not uh, no, it's not lemon yellow, but this is a sort of like a greenish cost like a thousand pesos per per one tube and then we have um equinadricon gold which i love the you know, the yellowish uh, type of uh, yeah but but if if given that you know i would go for areolin and triconoid um uh, red and then you have your uh, you're making me choose three <laughs> <laughs> i have i would huh, you see See, I, I love teal and I love cerulean at the same time and I like ultramarine. 
all the three shades of blues that I I I I, I keep, and then uh, sometimes I have turquoise blue here, and then I have my my usual uh, burnt sienna. You have this uh, type of green in oh man, this is very strange green, and then I have my moon glow, which I love, uh, which is a sort of like a purple. Ayun. And then we have um, um, uh, Hematite Violet, Ooh. <laughs> which has this grainy effect, which I love. So it's, it's really personal and, and it's really that, you know, what, what you're willing to spend. <laughs> you spend a lot. <laughs> no, um, no, really. Uh, and then if, if anyone's curious, uh, I started out with student grade, all right? Student grade. I, I bought Windsor Newton Cotman, the student grade. And then it's, it's, it, it, it got me started. And then when I, when I can afford these things, when I was in professional, uh, I mean, in work already, when I wanted to step it up, I tried it out, uh, the professional grade, like uh, Lefranc and Bourgeois is, it, it's one of those brands that was usually is, uh, by National Bookstore. And I was like, wow, this is, this is crazy, uh, nice. So I never went back to Cotman. And then when I started using Daniel Smith, 700 pesos and up even 1,000 per tube, which is a 15 M, uh, I think 15 ml, 15 ml, I think it's, it, uh, I, I don't regret it because uh, the, the, the type of uh, uniqueness of these watercolors have, have they're nice. I mean, like uh, it's it's different. I, I like the 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 vibrancy, the the consistency uh, on paper. So, eh, you know, but but my students, of course, they would complain, sir. You're making no. I I don't. Uh, you start out with with what you can afford, and yeah, even the set, which is one thousand pesos, by the field watercolor set of Cotman, Winsor Newton Cotman, which is one thousand plus pesos only. It's a good start. I, I don't, I don't agree in in making you go buy the most expensive. The paper, even the cellulose, is good enough. But the, don't buy the the fake um, Stratmore, which is it's terrible. Uh, don't buy some of the very very cheap ones. Uh, what I I know I suggest is the the Montval, for example. Uh, the student grade types, uh, cellulose types of one. The, the, the ideal is, is again, you, you, you can go in minimum six, not three, but, but you can, uh, <laughs> ideally, again, I said... Your, your limited I said, palette is six. <laughs> yes. Uh, if, if, I, if I may, again, one, one bright yellow and one uh, a slightly darker yellow, and then one, uh, uh, well, I don't have a uh, lighter red, like an orangey red and a, a, a very maroony red, <laughs> maroony red. One uh, light blue and then one darker blue. And you, if you have these, these uh, six, you can mix, like uh, you need a brown, you can, make, you can make any range of colors, actually. <sighs> Maybe we could I, could, I could do another topic about it. Color mixing. Color mixing. So, so the, the, the topic today is, is really just basic materials and techniques. The techniques um, is consistency. Uh, so color mixing is a different, another another whole, entire topic altogether because because it's a, I have to discuss about the uh, color theories. More things to look forward to. Okay. Anyway, Ning, uh, thank you for the topic idea. I can make that work. I want to so share. I will be there. Once you make your course, I'll make sure. <laughs> I mean, I was intending this until until what? This May or June, but it seems that th since there's a lot more topics that I could touch upon, and maybe some of you would like to share. Yes, I I would uh, if you can host like uh, any topic that you would like to talk about uh, regarding urban sketching. You're most uh, very much free to uh, to. Just give us a lesson plan or the outline of what you're going to talk about and then we'll see if it's a good topic and then... Jonathan! Hey! 
<laughs> Maybe you would like to share I'd, I'd some. Love, yeah, I'd like to see how Jonathan does his piece. Mm. Yeah, especially you know, uh, he creates uh, accurate accurate composition in colors or in shapes mm -hmm. in values really? as well. <laughs> yes, you know, I, one one time I, I remember asking him, what. What watercolors do you use? I, I like I like the you know the vibrancies of of how your what your your uh, sketches are. I mean, again, Jonathan, what do what do you use? What what sort of coloring? Are you? I do have some Daniel Smith, but um, like you're saying, they're really expensive. And huh. um, <laughs> so, but recently I've been buying. Um, I think they're called Mission, Mission perhaps. Mission Gold. Mission Biello, Mission Gold, yeah. Uh, uh, hang on, one minute. Aha, uh -huh, Mitsa. What? <laughs> <laughs> you called me out for being a geek, so I'm gonna geek out. <laughs> PY21 um, B. This, this what is that? Not... I don't know what that is. Don't ask me. <laughs> All right. yeah, yeah, Mission Brands. Yes, Mission Gold. Uh, mission. 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 The yes, brand is Korean. Mission. Yeah. So I bought those. Uh, those are vibrant, uh, from what I heard. I, I, yeah, I haven't. Good. I, I'm and, not. Um, these ones, Holbein. Oh, Holbein is 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 really uh, very very cost effective, and at, at the same time, it's um, artist grade. Uh, yeah. I I recommend this to my students if they want to go yeah. up. Yeah, I, I have some. Have, I, I do have Cotman as well. Yeah. Yes. Um, which are okay, but I prefer these. The, the ones I've been buying most recently is these Holbein ones. Yes. Which, yeah. I mean, they're not, they're kind of like in the middle range. I yes, find. in the middle range. At, uh, yeah, about 500 uh, from what, the last three, time I know. Three or 400 perhaps. Yes. You know, it's kind of manageable. But if I if I can get them, I will get the Daniel Smith ones if I can. But, yes. Uh, it, it's, it's, they're, 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 you know, they're, they're vibrant enough, and then at the same time, they're they're they're, they're not so expensive. They're, like they're not three times <laughs> what I what I buy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's a it's the the buying of 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 expensive uh, artist grade branded ones are it's like a a whole new world. <laughs> I mean, like if you're committed oh, yeah. to oh, one God. time, See, yes. I have like, yeah, I've I've tried out like sixty plus um, pigments. So I, it's... I find I find the Daniel Smith ones actually. I mean, they're expensive, but because they're they've got so much pigment in them. Mm, I yes, find they actually last a long time. Yes, another yeah. another by another brand is White Knights, White yeah. with knight as in the knight in shining armor, knight. White Knights, but it's a Russian uh, brand. Uh, yeah, I, I I gave some away to my friend who is also war, uh, he, who's, who who does watercolor and he's not into expensive stuff. So when he tried it, it was like, Janil, what is this? Ang tingkad. I was like, and so it, it changed his entire mindset about buying cheaper ones. So he, and then he started really continuing uh, buying professional grade or artist grade types yeah, because because they're so intense and then also there, there's talk about uh, and then i discourage uh, my students from using prang because prang behaves differently than than regular watercolor it's like okay the brown i was like why is this brown like this it's not like the burnt sienna that i'm, <laughs> I'm used to so it's different <laughs> Um, yeah, there, there, there's some that you, you shouldn't be buying or, or shouldn't be investing in. Uh, then you know, probably end this uh, session. Thank you for for uh, coming in. We we end this session for this month and uh, see you in the next sketchwalk in three weeks. Okay. Oh, okay. Bye I'll bye. be looking forward to that again. I'll be seeing right. you again. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you. Neil. Thanks thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.